You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. Check, check, one, two. Look like a little country. Some rock and roll and blues. Cause we sure love playing for good people like you. Let me know if you can hear me Check, check, one, two Welcome to Music Local and Sustainable, the radio show that features discussions with and the music of local musicians. I am your host, Dave Lake. Tonight in the studio we have Savannah singer and songwriter Tim Warren. Most of you know him as a guitarist and one of the vocalists for the band Clouds and Satellites. Welcome, Tim Warren. Thanks for having me, Dave. Let's talk a little bit about how did you become a musician? I guess just started listening to my mom's record collection. She's a musician, piano player, guitarist, played in some bands, and just picked up the piano and guitar at a young age, 10 or 12, and that's about how I started probably put it down for a good 15 years just got into sports and then probably in the last 15 years or so I've picked it back up and just haven't been able to put it down since when did you become involved in professional performance probably when I moved down here I'd been bouncing around quite a bit I used to work with Delta Airlines I started there in Cincinnati Ohio I ended up in New York City and that was about the time I started playing the guitar again. Started hitting some open mics up there. Had a, a really good coworker that bounced musical ideas off of and kind of started then and about 9-11 it happened. I'd about had my fill in New York anywhere. I'd been up there about three years or so. Long short of the way, in about a year or so, I ended up in Savannah, Georgia and just fell in love with it. And it's kind of what I was looking for. Excellent music community, not too large but not too small either a lot of similar like-minded people so i just started playing out as much as i could and tried starting bands and took a little while finally got into it i'd say full on once i started playing with marcus coolman who's a drummer multi-instrumentalist and sings and writes songs as well in our band and just been uh, i guess you'd say hitting it since then when did clouds and satellites begin probably I'd say five years ago. It was still just me and Marcus at that point. A friend of mine over in Hilton Head had uh, come up with the band name. Good general conversation, and he came up with that, called me one night, and I thought, well, that's perfect. And I just started writing songs and then playing them for people, so it all just kind of came together that way, I guess you'd say. And Marcus heard one of the songs. And you know, I'd been playing like breaks with the train wrecks with him doing two-piece stuff. We just mainly do covers, White Stripe, Bob Dylan, some Velvet Underground. And I said, well, I think I'm going to start this. And he says, you all right with me being a part of it? And I said, yeah, are you kidding me? We kind of did that for, I'd say, a couple years ago. And then Stu joined shortly after that. And then we got Matt Garapolo to join as well a little while after that. And I'd say as a four-piece, we've probably been doing it for eh, two or three years, mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both you and Marcus contribute songs to the band? Yes, yes. We, as a matter of fact, all four of us write. Yeah, we've done a pretty good job being democratic about it. You know, everybody end up playing the ones everybody enjoys the most, but that still seems to be a fairly even thing at this process. I'd, I'd say most of them are mine and Marcus at that point, just because we've been together as Clouds and Satellites for a while. Well, the two of you perform as Clouds and Satellites, as well as the full band of four. Yeah, we're uh, able to do that, uh, mainly because Marcus is capable of playing so many instruments. I'm pretty much stuck with the guitar or the keyboards, which I rarely ever play. Then I'll play some bass, too, but that's only as a four-piece uh, Matt songs. But we tend to do the two-piece, for the most part, acoustic. The full-on band tends to be more of an electric thing. But every once in a while, if, you know, depending where the gig is, Marcus might bring his drums, and I'll do electric guitar and kind of do that two-piece thing we used to do during the train wreck breaks. Do you still do solo? Every once in a while, but I don't look for it. I just really enjoy playing with people in general. 
it's just nice to hear other things with the songs. I mean, I got no problem with playing solo, but I'd much rather do it with, with other people. What do you mean by hearing other things from the songs? For example, you're just playing acoustic by yourself with a guitar, and you got the chords, and you might be able to solo or, or play some licks. It's nice to have a rhythm section. It's nice to have another person on, say, Stu with guitar that can do so many more things that I'm incapable of doing, at least at this point, for sure. And, and it frees me up to do other things if I feel so, to play the keyboard somebody else is on a guitar. A handful of my songs have been written on a piano, and, and there is definitely things that a piano brings that a guitar can't even though they're very closely related that's mainly i guess what i think of with the sounds just it's just not, i just enjoy hearing more i guess it's both marcus and you have written quite a few songs and so you can do whole sets with just originals what do you tend to do in terms of particular gigs do you tend to do all originals do you tend to mix it up with marcus and i we tend to play a few more covers I'd say over half of them are originals. I prefer the originals because we've got more than enough. I do enjoy playing some covers from time to time. They influence my writing and you know imagination. But that's generally the acoustic setting when it's the at least three or four of us. It's all on originals because you got four guys writing songs and. When you began playing instruments, did you take formal lessons? I just asked my mom to teach me, I think it was guitar first, a Beatles song, and then some Billy Joel on the piano. When I was that age, that Billy Joel was on top of the mountain, pop-wise. But it actually put the guitar down very quickly. Uh, the p piano, I hung with that for quite a while. She would give me just the basic lessons. Well, let's talk a little bit about writing. Let's talk about a song. Uh, how about strange inside your head what was the origin of that that song's really a metaphor a lot of the stuff i write isn't straightforward and this song is one of those this is one of those songs that i had a specific thought and idea in mind what i'm talking about the story this is definitely one of those that i leave up to the imagination of the listener if I'm just giving you my idea to it, that's all you're going to see from it. You mm -hmm. might see it a little bit differently, but that's how you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. And now, if I leave it up to your imagination, you're liable to think of something totally different. And not only that, your imagination may take you somewhere else. It was just a thought that, that came, or was yeah. there an event? That oh, yeah. With? I think I was listening to some Guided by Voices music. I was strumming the guitar and playing songs, working on a new cover or something. You know, the first few chords came together and just heard a melody. Like, all right, well, that's not just G, F, C, and D. There's something there, right? And it felt like a God of My Voice that's long. And so I went and clicked record and just started playing the progression and just singing whatever came out of my mind, stream of conscious, if you want to call it, found a melody, and build it from there. And as far as the lyrics, it's probably, I think it was the, it's going to be strange inside your head lines that, I just started singing those over and over and then kind of I made them fit.
is that pretty normal for you? You start with a tune, a tune comes to you, and then you put lyrics to it? Usually the melody, yeah, more times than not. And that's the thing I find. But yeah, more times than not. There have been a few times I thought, well, I want to write a song like this and sat down and wrote it in a particular way. But more times than not, that's the way it goes. Just let it come out. So far, that's worked. Most radio stations are background music. They are soothing, but they don't engage very much with your heart or mind. Here on WRUU, we offer something different, and unlike anything else on your radio dial, we present music and news programs that are captivating, enlightening, passionate, and above all, interesting. You never know what's coming next on WRUU. Our programs command your attention, and now let this command your attention. WRUU pays for its operating costs with the help of listeners like you who use the service. We are an all-volunteer staff, so we are counting on you to go online and pledge your support. Find the giving links at WRUU.org. When you go to WRUU.org, make a pledge of $60. That's $5 a month. And while $5 a month might not sound like very much, any pledge at any level will help WRUU bring you the unique and vital programs that you enjoy. And every person who pledges during our membership campaign may choose to receive a WRUU bumper sticker regardless of the pledge amount. Help us end this campaign successfully so you can sit back and enjoy Savannah's community radio with Global Soul, knowing that you did your part. Find the giving links at WRUU.org. You can choose to make a one-time donation or subscribe to a monthly gift. Remember, $60 is just $5 a month, and it helps Savannah's only community radio station. The web address is WRUU.org. And thank you for your support of WRUU. Tonight in the studio, we have Savannah singer and songwriter Tim Warren. So so generally, these tunes are just something strange inside your head. Yeah, some people would say that, sure. (laughs) They just sort of come to you. If you have an instrument around, do you go grab the instrument and sort of start doodling with it? Yeah. I've got a computer and recording program at the house. More times than not, I do that because I'm afraid I'm going to lose something. That's what I do. I grab it, jump, and start just whatever comes out, comes out. And More times than not, most of it comes out right away, but sometimes I'll go back months later. I'm sure it varies from song to song. How long does it take to write a song? The quick ones can be done in five to ten minutes. Other than the quick ones that come out, those other ones could I could take months. And for a song like Strange Inside Your Head, that sounds like it came pretty quickly. Yeah. Everything, except for maybe two or three lines of the verses. Actually, I think it was just one line. And I think what it was when I recorded, I mumbled something and couldn't coherently get anything out of it. <laughs> and then trying to find rhyming schemes, couldn't find the right thing. It's, you know, it's just... It's, It's a little frustrating. Another song that I really like is Never Sail. Mm, Yeah, I do too. And what was the origin of that? That is a co-write between me and Stu, our lead guitarist. The majority of the song is he wrote. That is about a, a mutual friend that I guess you'd say we worried about so to speak, or Mm -hmm. Stu brought that to us, and I loved it right away.
And so as a collaborative work like that, tell me a little bit about how that comes about. He brought all the music. We worked on the arrangement, settled in on that. He had, I think, three verses, and the third one he didn't like that he had written down and asked me to take a shot at it, and then a line or two, and maybe the other two verses. And so do you just sit there and play through it and try out lines on one another? Uh, yeah. When it came to the lyrics, that was just me and Stu sitting. We worked on it before the other two got to a rehearsal. I think what it was is he'd brought the song to us like the week before, and he got me the lyrics you know, so I could work on them. I think I came up with a, a verse worth, actually. Got him to say, are you all right with these lines? And he either says yes or no, or yeah, I like this, but change this word. Or, hey, remember, it's from this perspective, it rhymes here. That, that kind of banter goes back and forth. And then there again, it depends on who the person is, too. Like Stu and Marcus do some co-writing, too. And uh, Stu's actually really good about helping us finish <laughs> unfinished ones. I wouldn't say crack the whip, but just really forces us to sit down and say, just write something. <laughs> so you're at a rehearsal. You've talked through the lyrics before the rehearsal. You have made some contributions is it generally like before the rehearsal that he would have said, yeah, could we change this word, could we change that word? Or does that yeah. occur while you're doing it? Usually before, yeah, or maybe after. Yeah, not during, we just get into it. and Just once we get together with the music, it's pretty much concentrate on that and the arrangement. That's what that time's for. Right. And then uh, if somebody has time, the practice ends, usually because somebody has to go somewhere. Or, and then you know maybe one or two of them will stick around. And then we'll work on it. The lyrics go over that stuff then, too, if not before. Rehearsal time is pretty much just working out the particular arrangement. Yeah, 100%. Might record some, but pretty much arrangement. Yeah. yeah. Do you come to final conclusions at a rehearsal? Or do you say, this sounds like a good idea. Let's think on it and come back. Depends on the song and where it's at. More times than not, we'll come to a conclusion, but then there'll be some we'll lay down. There'll be some that we think we've concluded to a conclusion, and we'll come back and somebody's forgotten it, or no, no, that's not what we should do. Let's redo it this way. So do you have recording equipment then at the rehearsal, mm -hmm. so you can just do that? Yeah, we've got a uh, record on uh, Logic, uh, good quiver microphones, talking to other friends, just kind of building up a decent recording setup. Record a few demos or, or albums or whatever. A couple here just as just as uh, a friend thing because I like doing it myself. Now, you know, the EP and some of the stuff we'll play, that was recorded different. That wasn't with us. Mm -hmm. we'll let that get mm -hmm. out of our hands, which I'm glad we did. Mm -hmm. We just concentrate mm -hmm. on recording it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but I've got, uh, got the equipment to love, love messing around with it for sure. And do you tend to do your own mixing or do you have someone else uh, do uh, the mixes when it comes to the stuff at the house yeah we'll do our own mixing me and marcus marcus has less fear as far as the mixing he'll go in and do a lot of different things and try them but but as far as the ep and the new album coming the, we leave that up to a mutual friend uh, ryan shimini who uh we've met through matt uh garipolo mm -hmm. and uh he lives up in new york city and works with a recording uh studio and a school up there and he's very, very talented at it, uh, more than thrilled with what he's done. And uh, through him, we uh, able to find some people to reasonably master the album for us and kind of really a you know, properly recorded master, but really a DIY project, uh, mm -hmm. I would say. Now, the, the uh, MP3s you sent me, those are the final mixes. Strange Inside Your yeah. Head is, is a master never take. Is. And Never Sail. Yeah, uh, the other ones are early mixes of the new ones, or I think the Melancholy is an unmixed one. Uh. So you've done most of the recordings? It's all done except for, uh, like I said, maybe a, a few things that Ryan will take care of, you know, off of maybe one or two of the songs, but it's done. We we, we cranked that out over at uh, Dollhouse House Studios uh, that Peter runs over there, which mm -hmm. was super fun and a great place to record and we we cut 17 18 songs in three days got all the basic music tracks down there in less than two days and then ryan had his uh, we did it on pro tools and he brought his computer microphones out the house i did my vocals out there uh, 
early one day, and then he did the rest with Matt and Marcus and their vocals, and, and pretty much wrapped it up in three and four days. So yeah, I got that coming down the pike. I, I don't think they're all going to make the album, but hopefully, if all things go well, we'll release the rest of them as maybe a couple of singles too, because mm-hmm. we like mm-hmm. we still still like doing the vinyl. You know, mm-hmm. it's not exactly economically profitable but we all enjoy it enough we'll probably at least do that with this this bunch yeah and when would you expect the album to come out probably probably not till next i would say next spring ryan's finishing up the mixing right now uh mastering probably won't take very long i guess when i say it i'm, I'm thinking for the vinyl because you gotta get into the queue if anybody knows anything about uh, ever dealt with having a vinyl record make there's a months long backlog yeah. They don't have the machines. No, don't have the machines. And when the vinyl when vinyl went out of business, they let the machines go, and so now very few places have machines that they can yeah. press vinyl. Yeah, so that's uh, and no one's making them. No, no, no. You got a few here and there. We had ours done in a plant in Columbus, Ohio, and then you got Jack White, who's got his place in Detroit. He just opened. I guess mm-hmm. is a new pressing plant that looks incredible. But yeah, there's not too many of them. It seems that vinyl is picked up little by little over the last you know 10 years with mm-hmm. the, you know, the mm-hmm. indie crowd and all that and, but yeah i'm guessing that we might uh be ready uh, with the vinyl by march the reason i mentioned that is that it's probably about march this past year when we got this one out which we had done just about the same time the year before we got more songs but hopefully we're a little bit quicker at it this time hopefully the we'll have the mastered digital ones to you I would say we'd probably have those definitely by the end of the year. You know. So are you likely to post those as singles or are you going to wait until you have the vinyl uh, and do yeah. vinyl, do CD, do release? We haven't discussed that yet. It's a good question. We tend to cross bridges when they come to us. That one isn't here yet. I guess we'll decide, hey, which are we going to put 10, 11, 12 on the, on the, on the full album? I mean, digital world doesn't matter. You can do a whole album, you can slap them all out, obviously, you know. Or you can do singles, but it's not as cool as getting that little 45. But I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that one. I'm going to guess at least 12 of them. It really changes the milieu and uh, the fact that you can release it in so many forms now. Mm-hmm. You know, do you do it all at once? Do you do it in piecemeal? A lot of albums that aren't coming out of big bands or very prominent artists the album's not coming out and they're already releasing tunes off of it yeah i guess that's yeah. it's been mastered so they'll just get it out and i'm not sure how i mean everybody deals with that but just thinking about this uh in the ep it's like well we the final we ain't got it yet but it's finished you know it's almost like a pressure like put it out there you're excited you're proud of what you've done you really like it and like you said there's so many processes it's like you know, I wouldn't say you're throwing up your hands, but it's just kind of like, let's, let's get it out there. You know, yeah. people want the vinyl, we'll get the vinyl. You know, more than likely. It's uh, definitely a different world. Right? Like anything, I have pros and cons to it, but I'm thoroughly on board with you know, the digital world. And, you know, there's still some people that don't like it for whatever reason. I get that. But for somebody who doesn't have a record deal that doesn't fit the, the pop scene of the day, the internet is your place not only for you to get your stuff out but to find like-minded bands that aren't there yet i mean it's just you you can't keep up with it there's so many good ones out there which in a way makes it hard i mean it was gonna be hard for you whether it was there or not to get somewhere if you get anywhere but it's not really the reason we do it but that's part of that thought process for a lot of people i'll put the bug in your ear and i'll next time i see marcus i'll put the bug in his ear that if there are songs that you want to be played, give me a uh, fully mixed MP3 and I can play it on, wow. on my uh, Evening Eclectic show uh, in anticipation. And I'll mention this is in anticipation of the album coming out, particularly if you have an album title at that point. Right. And I don't know, do you have an album title? For the new one yet? No, that, that, that bridge is even further down the road. But I can say that to anticipate the album coming out, playing this, I can be used that way. Well, well man, that's, I love it. Thank you so much <laughs> for being so loose. The whole point of this show, Music Local and Sustainable, is to promote local musicians, to introduce the Savannah community to their musicians so that they know them better, 
to encourage them to get out and see local musicians around town and other musical events around town. But also, that's why we have an hour on WRUU that is local music only, and we have, and we'll probably will expand that, it used to be two hours, and we ate into it by uh, having a live show on another topic, so we'll probably have more music of local performers more um, in another time slot, too. Right now it's on Monday night from um, 11 to midnight, but we'll probably put it in some other places, too. But also, a lot of local artists are being played on different shows on, on WRU, and so we, we like doing that because it's a way to serve the community and the music community. Well, let, let me thank you and yours for WRUU because I, I was just, uh, and I'm super excited about this station, too. I was just talking to a friend the other night. We was driving to that Tuesday gig, and turned on WRUU and I have trouble getting them out. I live out in their pooler. Yeah. Uh, which is a question I got. We can, when's, when are you going to get more power? <laughs> and that is <laughs> not <I> likely. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime soon. Okay. Well, to make a long story short, uh, the initial license application went in at a hundred Watts mm -hmm. and it was reduced to 40 because of our placement on the dial oh. to interact with right. others. Okay. We never really will ever get above 100 because we're an LP station. We'd have to change our license okay. from LP to general broadcast. Wow. That might occur sometime in the future. But Go to somewhere different on the dial maybe? Or, or Yeah, yeah. Th that could be a change that's made mm -hmm. too, but that's, that's a very long process. So we're not likely to go... Well, either yeah. way, when I can hear it, I'm excited because I, when I heard the train wrecks the other night, uh, just uh, it made me happy because Savannah's really my likes and, and whatnot. I've needed a station like this for quite a while. Yeah, and that's why we do it. The, the way the aerial is positioned and the transmitter uh, functions, it is really directed eastward. And so even though the aerial itself is on the west side of town, it's actually more directed eastward. To tell you the truth, I was sitting in Tybee. Wow, and really? And I turned it on, and there it was. That's very rare. Generally, you have to be Wilmington Island uh -huh. and west to really get us. So you're telling me I need to move? Uh, yeah, you need to move. You're on okay. the wrong side of town. If you move just a very short distance, uh -huh. <laughs> because we, we go to 95, and then you almost lose us. It's sort of like, yeah, like yeah, that. You yeah. get to 95, and it's almost mm -hmm. like that that you lose us. Right. And so that's just the nature of it. It's just uh, when I'm heading out toward Tybee, very often I'll get to like the Bull River Bridge and mm -hmm. it will then become so staticky it's just not yeah. worthwhile. This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. The simplest reason to support WRUU with a financial gift is because you listen. This radio station relies on listeners like you to bring the programs that you enjoy. WRUU is now in the midst of a membership campaign, and we're counting on you to help us finish this campaign successfully so that we can continue to broadcast and grow community radio that is unlike anything else on your radio dial. No other station plays the kind of music that you hear on WRUU, and no other station plays the kind of talk programs that you hear on WRUU. Tell us now that you value this program with your financial support. When you go to WRUU.org, make a one-time contribution of $60 or a monthly donation of $5 per month. It's easy, quick, and affordable. A donation at any level will make you eligible to receive a WRUU bumper sticker so that you can show the world on wheels that you support Savannah's only community radio station. Become a serious fan at the $107.50 level or above, and we'll ask you if you'd like a WRUU tote bag, a handy gift that goes with you anywhere you need the help, at the grocery store, at the beach, or around the house. These are just small tokens of our appreciation. The real thanks that you get is the satisfaction of knowing that you make possible the diverse, vibrant, exciting, and truly engaging music and news programs you enjoy every day. Go to WRUU.org and make a $60 donation, make a $107.50 donation, or make up your own amount. 
with our great thanks. Tonight, we have Tim Warren on the show. Would you be interested in doing some of the new stuff? Some of the new stuff? Yeah, like some, some ideas off the new album to give everybody an idea of, for the new yeah. album. How about, let's do uh, Shaney. This definitely is recorded more than likely. We'll see if it's on there or not. As I can actually tell you about this. The gal Shaney does not exist. It's mainly uh, about a former girlfriend, but then parts of other girlfriends put together. This is, anyway, this is Shaney. You said this is an amalgam of different individuals mm -hmm. yeah. put together into one individual shaney. <clears throat> yes, correct. You can fit as much in in about two and a half minutes. What features did you draw and why did you draw those features to put it in this song? My main concern when writing those about those features was the, the poetry part of it, if you call it that. I guess because they... they fit the the poetry i guess when i went at this i'm really not sure where the name shaney came from let me just you know write it as uh, abstract but still telling the same thing getting those points across i had came up with the first line shaney loves to come around when she blows into town all right i got a line and then i start rhyming from there and i went for all right let's go from let's try to rhyme as much as we can what works and what doesn't i found the end word or syllable and just kind of build it around there and then as I was building the lines that's where those features came out because they actually fit the rhyme you know they were like well that's awesome about her this fits that so you had <laughs> you had a bunch of characteristics that you really admire mm -hmm. and sure. then you selected from those characteristics that fit the rhyme yeah there you go okay that's right and they kind of told the story too and they told they were the just story they too. weren't totally random even though right, they, right. they are really sort right. of random right yeah 
Well, not really, yeah. because there are characteristics <clears throat> that you admire or characteristics you wanted to put in this individual. Yeah, you're, yeah, it's yeah. just then you had to do the final selection so that it made it easier to make it into a lyric. Yes, yeah. yeah. How long did it take to write this? Mm. That one came quick. I was pretty sure I was just going to do the verse and the chorus, wouldn't worry about bridge, or it was going to be a straightforward song. Even with the band, it's going to be straightforward. It might have been a... I say five or ten minutes. It probably took me an hour to get the lyrics right. Yeah, I just went from there. And you said that this you wrote this soon after you wrote Marina. Yeah, it couldn't have been too long. There. Well, right. now that we sort of stumbled onto Marina, yeah, <laughs> sort of went the back way. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about Marina and the origin of Marina. Uh, the song about Gal was. Uh, mad about and still mad about probably when I first met her it was probably almost a decade ago she's actually from Europe mm -hmm. I met her over here when she was over here working she ended up moving back and I didn't go with her you know she didn't want to stay but I couldn't get her out I don't know if I was writing the song to for her oh I was definitely writing it for her but was I writing it to try to convince her to come back or whatever but I, I think more of it was just I just thought she deserves a song it's just silly I got this much feeling for her an emotion an attachment it took a while I couldn't even get started on it I just knew I wanted to write it there comes uh, my next door neighbor who isn't necessarily a musician but a music fan like anybody else and I think we've been listening to some old traditional country stuff and I've been talking about the Marina song and, and he came up with the line, you know, Marina, it's been so long since I've seen you, and sang it in that kind of old stock country. I went, yeah, that's it, right there. And just and went in the house immediately. And he had the line, I sung the melody. This is one word, just it had no instruments. So boom, that's it. So went in and just kind of started hitting different chords and found C and sang it. All right, that's obviously the key I'm singing it. And just build it from there. Well, I went back out and talked to him for a second and said, dude, I'm going back in to work on that. I can't. I can't not let this go and he goes all right so i went inside and found uh you know marina it's been so long since i've seen you and then built that verse and then i thought and then wrote the lyric went to the pad wrote the rest of the lyrics and sat down thought, well i need a change and just went from there and it came out marina it's been so long since i've seen you Yeah.
This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. The simplest reason to support WRUU with a financial gift is because you listen. This radio station relies on listeners like you to bring the programs that you enjoy. WRUU is now in the midst of a membership campaign, and we're counting on you to help us finish this campaign successfully so that we can continue to broadcast and grow community radio that is unlike anything else on your radio dial. No other station plays the kind of music that you hear on WRUU, and no other station plays the kind of talk programs that you hear on WRUU. Tell us now that you value this program with your financial support. When you go to WRUU.org, make a one-time contribution of $60 or a monthly donation of $5 per month. It's easy, quick, and affordable. A donation at any level will make you eligible to receive a WRUU bumper sticker so that you can show the world on wheels that you support Savannah's only community radio station. Become a serious fan at the $107.50 level or above, and we'll ask you if you'd like a WRUU tote bag, a handy gift that goes with you anywhere you need the help, at the grocery store, at the beach, or around the house. These are just small tokens of our appreciation. The real thanks that you get is the satisfaction of knowing that you make possible the diverse, vibrant, exciting, and truly engaging music and news programs you enjoy every day. Go to WRUU.org and make a $60 donation, make a $107.50 donation, or make up your own amount with our great thanks. Tonight, we have Tim Warren on the show. Do you think about expressing emotions that way? Do songs generally come out of strong emotions? Yeah, they do. Even if I intentionally sit down to write something, it has to be something I feel. It has a strong, elicits a strong response and feeling in me. Let's talk about another song that you've recorded for the new album. Melancholy Superb. such a jerk when you left with all your might and it always seemed superb you were left alone in such a room such a trip so pretty missed standing tall halls checkered rolling by Ooh, you're a brake light down by the bite will find So came the day that stayed You were so wronged They left you home with no one home They're loving you When no one's left alone When the clock struck twelve, you were a shell Broken by your broken health It never occurred for you to run and hide as a frown She said the cure would never be found You know some crimes stillborn cries left with these thighs sweet by and by She was seeking an arm Seven what's wrong all night Whenever was my mind ever so alive You were given a ride with a planned demise Searching nine to five 
melancholy eyes so superb so superb so superb so superb So, uh, that's one of the ones you uh that's unmixed yeah yeah, yeah and that's yeah. a full band yeah it's full bands it's all there the only thing it's i love to have some reverse drums because when we kind of demo record out the house a while back we just got into messing with things we thought we could just add a lot of stuff to the song so and maybe some synthesizer white noise i mean if not the way it is i'm i'm happy with What was the origin of this song? Just that opening uh, little arpeggi uh, two note on the A chord. I just love the way it sounded. Uh, it reminded me of Beatles stuff that I love so much. It just had that kind of minor feel to it and, and the descending. That's pretty much the origin of the, the lyrics. I really don't know what it's about. <laughs> yeah, obviously it had some thoughts, led to some lines, but they it wasn't it didn't come from one particular uh, story or idea. Or person, it just, or event, yeah, or event. No, yeah. uh, uh-uh. it's just like a amalgamation of a lot of a lot of things, almost like a life story, I guess, so to speak, or a big part of a life. Well, tonight we've had Tim Warren on the show, and I'm so glad you were able to come in and talk about your music and talk about clouds and satellites. Oh, thank you, Doctor Dave. It's been an honor, pleasure, and look forward to seeing you huh? in the future and listening to 107.5. So, huh? thank you again. Bob's in the dust bowl She said she'd never go home Never 
This has been another edition of Music Local and Sustainable, and I've been your host, Dave Lake. Save this time for another show next week. Well, I know we ain't headed for the Hall of Fame. We're gonna give it what we got, man, that ain't no shame. Let me know if you can hear me. Check, check, one, two. Let me know if you can hear me. Check, check, one, two.